Okay, so um, anyways, if we were uh, to take a look at the next one, from 92 to 101, how many terms would there be there? 10. Ten. Right, because you can go 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101. 10 terms. But then I got problems, unless I take my shoes off, uh, if I get any larger than that, right? So we need to come up with a better strategy than just counting them. Does anybody have a strategy? Sure, Robbie. Yeah, so if you didn't see the pattern, what we did was we went top number minus the bottom number plus 1. So uh, 14 minus 11 is 3, plus 1 is 4. 101 minus 92 is 9, plus 1 is 10. Okay, so that's how many terms there are. So if we were sneaky and we asked a question like how many terms are there now, could you still do it? What if it's 2n minus 5 and n minus 1? Can you give me an answer that has an n in it? Sorry? That sounds right from what I remember. So I think what you got to do is pretend that these were numbers, top minus bottom plus 1, and we'd end up with n uh, minus 5 plus 2, so I should have n minus 3. And what about the next one? This time we went top minus bottom plus 1. It would be 2n plus 3. OK? So let's take a look then at how we would use this uh, to help us answer questions about series. So this would be a typical kind of question that might involve sigma notation. And uh, we'd have to figure out how do we go from sigma notation back to the formulas that we already had. Okay. So for example, in the first one, um, I have to figure out three pieces of information. I have to figure out what's the first term, what's the common ratio, and how many terms are there. So we know how to do all that. Let's, let's try this. How do I get the first term? Plug it in. Plug what in? You're right. Yeah, plug in the number for k at the start. That'll tell me the first term. Now it's tempting just to say, oh, the first number is 2. That may not always be the case. For example, uh, a little further on here, the first term in this sequence, right here, the first term is negative 6. Okay? It's not 3 you actually want to stick in the first value. Okay? So don't just assume here that it's 2. It's tempting. But uh, actually do the math here. And it still ends up to be 2. But just be careful. Okay? That's all I'm saying. Be careful. Okay, so now we got the first term. Can you see which term is going to turn out to be the common ratio? Could you figure it out? Three is correct. How did you know? What's your intuition tell you? It looks like the same formula. That's a good way to think of it. The other way you can think about it is as k gets bigger, the only difference is I keep multiplying by 3. If k is 1 larger, I multiply by 3 one more time. Multiply by 3. Multiply by 3. That's a common ratio. Okay. So that's easy to find. Common ratio is 3. How many terms are there here? Twelve is correct. So n equals to twelve. That means I have enough information. The sum of twelve terms is going to be the first term, one minus the common ratio to twelve, over one minus the common ratio. Okay, so that is uh, in fact enough for me to answer this, and I end up with uh, let's see here, two times one minus three to the twelve, divided by one minus three. So it's uh, it's fairly small. See, it's only half a million. Okay. So the good news is you definitely would have had a calculator to help answer that question. Okay, so try the second one. See if you can do it by yourself. What would the, uh, what would the sum formula look like if you were to try to work from sigma notation? Okay, so uh, let's put the pieces together. What's the first term? What's the first term in this series? 
three, yeah. So double check. Don't be super lazy about it. It is going to end up being three. Um, what's the common ratio? Negative two, yeah. Okay. And what's the number of terms? Sorry? Ten. Yeah, it looks like ten. So the sum of ten terms is going to be three, one minus negative two to the uh, ten divided by one minus negative two. And I believe it's one, zero, two, three. Is that right? Am I remembering it wrong? It was a day ago that I did this last. Let me just see here. 1 minus negative 2 to the 10. 1 minus. Should be negative 1, 0, 2, 3. There. Um, be careful about your calculator. Notice I have brackets around this exponent. If you put it in your calculator like this, um, then your calculator is not going to do what you would expect it to because it's going to do the exponent first, then it's going to multiply it by a negative, you're going to get a different answer. So be careful about that. Those brackets I put into mine, you need those brackets there. Okay. And I know it's been like a couple of days since we actually did any logs, so you must miss them by now, right? No? <laughs> Okay, but um, a common cross topic in series is to do logs. Okay, so let me show you. It's not as bad as you think. It's not nearly as bad as the logs uh, questions could get. But in this one, if I just expand it using what I know from the definition, this is what I would get. What else could I do to this now that I've expanded it? Say it, Rob? Yeah. The log law that multiplies them together, this would become log 3 times 4 times 5, or log 60. Okay. So see if you can simplify the next one here, uh, which is from k equals 3 to 5 of log 10 to the k. So you could go like this. You could go log 1,000, log 10,000, log 100,000. But hopefully you remember there's a little identity that can help you here. This is the logarithm base 10. This is the exponent base 10. So a function, it's inverse. They cancel out. This would just become 3 plus 4 plus 5, which is 2. 12. Okay, so you, if you remember that little identity, then you don't have to think so hard. Okay, so the last thing uh, that we'll talk about today is how to use your TI-83 to help you. Um, and it is a neat trick your TI-83 can do. So I'll show you the keystrokes that can get you there, and then we'll try a couple. So what you want to do is you want to go second function, and you're going to hit the uh, stat button. which really what we're looking for is the list. Same way you got a sequence. Then what you're going to do is hit the over key um, until you get the math screen, which is at the top. And then you're going to choose sum. Okay. So on mine, it's number five. It may also be on yours, but different versions of TIs have different numbers sometimes. So... Uh, if you have, like, I think if you have the TI-89, you have a completely different way of doing this. But anyways, we basically want to hit at the sum. And then what's going to be left on my screen is this now. It's going to say sum, and my cursor is waiting for me here. Okay, can I just see how many people are there? They have a sum and a cursor. Okay, those are the keystrokes if you want to catch up to us. Those of you who don't have your graphing calculator yet, remember you have less than a week now in which to source one out. Okay, uh, you will need it for the next unit. Okay, so um, now what we want to do is the sum, we're going to sum up a sequence. 
So inside here, we're going to place a sequence. Okay, so let's start on this one. So I'm going to do the sum and the sequence. Do you remember the keystroke for a sequence? It's the same up until this point, except you pick, um, instead of picking math, you pick uh, list, sorry, ops, I think it was. Let me just double check, yeah. You pick ops instead, and instead of picking sum, you pick sequence. So now what your screen looks like is what mine does here, and then there's a cursor blinking at you like this. Okay. okay. So the T I D three is going to do the sum of a sequence. That's a series. So all I have to do is enter in the sequence, which is um, this one here. So this would be three times negative two to the x. You don't need that extra set of brackets there, I guess. Um, the variable is x. I'm going to start at one and go until four, and Let's see here, 3 times negative 2 to the x on x from 1 to 4 is 30. Okay? So in that way, it's kind of nice because if I use the TI-83 to do it, I don't have to think about how many terms are here, what's the first term, what's the common ratio. I just put in the TI-83 and it'll work all that out for me. So I'll have you try to do the next one on your own using your TI-83 if you've got one, and then we'll see where... Okay, so if you are needing some help with your TI-83, um, I'm happy to help you after we finish the lesson here. But basically what you're going to see on your screen is the sum sequence, and this is the expression I'm putting in. So 5 times 2 to the x. x is the variable, and it starts at 4. It goes until 9. You don't need to put in closing brackets, by the way. But um, let's see here. That means I get... Uh, where am I? 5 times 2 to the x. I get 50, 40. Okay. Can I just see how many people are able to use their TI-83 to do that? How many people like their TI-83 doing that? Okay. Good.